This is 15 Minutes to Freedom. I'm your host, Ryan Nidell, and today's episode is Malaysian Click Farms. So I'm new to this whole podcast thing. This is a, this is a first for me. It pushes me pretty far outside my comfort zone. I don't admittedly love to hear my own voice. I think that's probably something that most of us deal with. That when I play back my own recordings, it doesn't make me physically ill, but it's pretty damn close. Like I just avoid it like the plague. But knowing that there's something inside of me that I have to get out, a message of terminology, there's something in me that a higher power is telling me just get it out, that someone needs to hear it. It all started back a couple of years ago when a friend of mine, Danny Page, posted a seven-day video challenge on Facebook. And that video challenge was designed to push us outside of our comfort zone and share a Facebook video with the world for seven consecutive days. And he posted it, and I, I held him in such high regards and still do. He does all my nutritional protocol and my, my training and things like that. Hold him in such high regards that when he said, you know, he's doing it to push himself outside of his comfort zone, I thought, well, I might as well do the same. You know, it's, it's a good thing for me to do to expand. And so I would take these videos in my car. It was back when I was selling custom clothing for another firm and would take these videos. And it was whatever popped up. Some of it was about my past, about my family, about my, my father and mother. And some of it was about, you know, infidelity on, on Lindsay or bad decisions. There were all these things that I had to kept dark for a long time because I was embarrassed about them. And part of this challenge was to get those out, out in the public. And I understand now that was so they didn't have power over me. But back then it was one of those things of, man, I just have to do it because I'm uncomfortable as shit with this. Like I have to do something that's different. And so I progress and take these seven days worth of videos. But I can admittedly tell you guys, I never went back and watched one of them. Like I see in the Facebook memories that all of us have that pop up that, you know, two years ago now or three years ago, whatever it's been. I think most time it's two years ago. And it's one of these videos, one of these early videos about me doing, you know, whatever it was I was talking about. And I, I click on it for a second just to hear how I've changed or hear how I progressed. But I've still never watched one of the videos all the way through. So all these things, and there's this, there's this limiting factor as to why I won't hop on the microphone or hop on camera. Now, I've been told it seems like it comes pretty easily to me. But I get almost sick to my stomach and have every bit of self-doubt and fear every time before I jump on this podcast or jump in front of a camera. Fear of judgment, fear of failure, fear of making a fool of myself. And it's weird because I don't really hold myself in high regards. It's not a pride thing or an ego thing. It's just a general insecurity that's deep-rooted. And so I've struggled back and forth with what to do with this podcast and where to take it and what it should be. And what came out after looking for a platform and looking for a platform to share my message or share what's important to me or, you know, to be a social, to be an influencer. I won't even say social media. I want to add value to the world and whatever that looks like. Then I realized I can only add value from a place of authenticity. I can't be valuable in a way that's that's fake. It doesn't work. Everybody will see right through it. And so in the level of authenticity, I can share the mistakes I've made. I can share the pains and the trials and the tribulations and not have it be about the successes. Share the shit. Share the stuff that's swept under the rug that people don't want to hear about. And so in that, it's setting up this platform. And as I've discussed uh, on a couple different episodes, part of something called Wake Up Warrior, where we are forced to, or now I choose to meditate every day. And again, I thought meditation was nothing more than like holding your fingers together and sitting cross-legged in a quiet room, maybe shaving my head and growing out a beard, wearing some sort of weird robe. And then when when that robe is on, you know, humming, you know, um, you know, whatever it is that you're supposed to say, like that is what meditation always was to me. I didn't understand it. And I've progressed and went from calming my mind to understanding that I can physically feel myself now starting to tap into a different power source. And whether you believe in God or, or Buddha or whatever it is that you believe in, it doesn't matter. But I think we can, most of us will agree there's an alternative power source in the world. And so, so from that, you know, I'm able to start meditating and getting myself out of my body. You know, I don't really feel like I'm connected anymore. I get a little tingly for a second and it's almost like I'm transported somewhere else. Eyes are closed, feel very at peace. Everything feels great. It, it's really a refreshing feeling. I do that every morning, get out of bed and it's one of the first things I do. Green smoothie and then go meditate for at least 30 minutes. And in that meditation, when I, when I stop meditating, when I, I say come out of it or come to, the first thing that I do is pull out a, a pen and paper is what it used to be and now it's actually my computer with some software that we have, but I journal. And I journal whatever comes to mind. And sometimes it's coherent thoughts, sometimes it's things I can openly share with with you guys, and sometimes it's more of business things, things that, you know, maybe I don't know how to fully express them. Maybe they're just ideas. And that, that was today. Today was one of those days where 
I woke up and meditated and not, yeah, woke up and meditated and then shared a bunch of things with myself about business and what I want to do and how I want to structure things and different ideas. And it became much more of a planning and strategy session with myself than it did something I could share on the microphone right now. So that's what the basis for this podcast ends up being. It ends up being sharing a message that comes from the backside of meditation. But I see how difficult it is to get traction with a podcast. Like this is not an easy thing. Sure, it's easy to buy a microphone and a boom and you know a, a laptop and a mic. Like the, the the inconsequential pieces to have a podcast are pretty simple. You know, I was super nervous and was ready to pay somebody ten thousand dollars to teach me how to have a podcast. When you take a step back and you ask the right people the right questions, you realize it really doesn't take much of anything. It's a series of computer programs and some hardware and a couple guys that really enjoy this stuff. One thing leads to another, and all of a sudden you have yourself a podcast. But in having one of these podcasts, it's rather difficult to get traction to it. Right now, I'm on the entry point into something called uh, the Warrior Week, and Warrior Week is from Wake Up Warrior, and it's 12, it's actually 14 guys, um, including myself, on the beaches of Laguna, uh, learning more about ourselves. It's a, a five day men's retreat, if you will, typically entrepreneurs or self driven individuals. And we're looking to become better husbands, fathers, men, and leaders in our community. So we go out there. But in that, I have a 30-day blackout window where I'm not supposed to be on social media. You know, if it doesn't have something directly to do with my business or my family or the guys in Warrior, it's pretty much just off limits right now. And it's been refreshing because I find myself not wasting as much time and I don't care what I'm posting. But it's incredibly difficult then to share with the world this podcast. You know, it's Sure, we can put it up in the iTunes store or Stitcher or SoundCloud and magically maybe through you know mental propulsion or, or divine intervention, some people are stumbling upon this. But right now, you know, I might be at, I'd have to look, but let's just say 300,000 downloads across all the episodes that I have. And it's something that I know from the way that my mind works. There's a back-end algorithm. There's a way to hack into, if you will, how iTunes works, how to get more eyeballs on your, on your offer. So I tasked the team today, you know, the guys here in the office, including myself for a little bit, with finding a way to kind of what I'll call game the system, admittedly. Not to not put in hard work, not to diminish the quality or the consistency of my podcast, but how do we figure out how to optimize when we post? What time of day? Do we post and then send emails out and then post to social media? You know, what's the right order? How, how should it be structured? And we have probably a 10 or 15 minute conversation, could have been longer, about how to do this the right way. And we all leave and, and find our own pieces and parts. And in searching for these pieces and parts on how to get this spoken word out to more people in the marketplace, I circle back around with Kurt, one of the guys on the team, graphic designer, phenomenal guy, guy I've known actually since high school. We went to the same high school, Lexington, uh, just just south of Mansfield here in Ohio. And in circling back with him, he's given me this killer quality content, you know, different things about which sort of category to post into and, and how to use SEO the right way and and all these different variables, I'm like, man, these are incredibly actionable items. These are things that are good. Like if we could just spend a little bit more time to, together collectively, I think we'd have a good strategy here. Like this is something now that I can go from being an unranked something to eventually with consistency and effort be ranked, get get this word out to more people and ultimately then use this to propel myself into public speaking and you know, I hate to use the term motivational, but just to be a person of more influence and of more passion for the world. Because I've realized now, being truthful with myself, that matters. I didn't think it mattered before, but it certainly matters now. Like, I know it matters. And in that, trying to figure out, you know, reverse engineer how all this stuff goes. And Kurt's doing the research, and the team's doing the research, and I spent, you know, 10 or 15 minutes doing research. Kurt also then lobs in over the bow that there's another way we can get traffic. There's another way we can kind of game the system. He's like, you know, we can always use a Malaysian click farm. And I laugh. I'm like, what in the fuck is a Malaysian click farm? Like, what is that? Thinking he's kidding. I think there's some term that he's just he's made up. And apparently, there's been multiple articles written about how these guys have figured out that you can use Malaysian click farms. So a bunch of people somewhere in Malaysia that have SIM cards or phones or computers or something they've strung together to be able to log in and out of iTunes accounts over and over again and follow your podcast. And there's been three or four references, maybe more, maybe less, a podcast that have consistently in the top three to five globally but I've never had an episode in the top 20. And so mathematically, that's a difficult equation to put together. So they have to then, in theory, be using something different. Hence the term Malaysian click farm. And so he's telling me this. I'm like, that's brilliant. Like, that is a phenomenal way to get traffic. Like, you can use that and you can, and then I start getting excited. You know, you can game the system. You can do X, Y, and Z. 
and then I can then I can get in the top five. And if I get in the top five, then more people will listen, and then the rest of my ranking would be organic. It'd be authentic. Un- authentic. It'd be from me. And I'm, I'm really contemplating in in these five minute in this five minute window using this service, like researching a Malaysian click farm. Like, how do we find one? Who can I talk to on the development team? How can I back into forums? What can I do to make this different? And then I, you know, I ask her, well, what, what would you say the downside is? And the first thing is, if we ever wanted to monetize this podcast, it'd be tough because it'd be immoral to, you know, sell advertising space based off the fact of, you know, falsifying your listener base. Okay, I'm with that because these are fake downloads then. But then it makes me just literally like almost stop dead in my tracks. I go from thinking about this to like, what the fuck am I actually thinking about? Like, this is the quintessential bullshit thing that most of us do in life. Like, what is the shortcut? Like, what's the quick way to get to where we want to? And the answer ultimately is there is no fucking quick way. There's no special magic sauce that's going to get you to somewhere you want to be other than hard work, consistency, and dedication. And I know that from the gym or from business or from even personal relationships. But in the moment, in that moment of not even desperation, because I'm not desperate for new listeners, but in that moment of pseudo desperation and lack of clarity, I'm about to develop or to deploy my resources, both capital and and people, into finding me a click farm so I can game and and confuse the system of iTunes so that I get more followers. Like that's as bad as, admittedly, out of the twelve or eleven thousand followers I have on Instagram, I bought four or five thousand of them at some point two or three years ago because I thought that shit mattered. I thought the the fake social currency was something that made me feel better inside. And I'm about to go down the same path again. And if left to my own devices in that moment, I probably would have started down the path. But here we sit because it dawns on me there's this there's this whole other way that I'm looking at this situation. Like if I'm doing this in my business, if I'm doing this on a podcast, it comes from an organically genuine place, a place where I just am getting out what's inside of me and hoping that people connect with it. If I'm willing to game the system there, where else in my life am I willing to game the system or take a shortcut? Like, am I going to shortcut my employees when they need something? Am I going to try to find someone that, that's less expensive or you know, can do the job half as well or twice as quick? Am I going to do it in my relationship with Lindsay? Am I going to lie to her about where I've been or what I've been doing? Like, this can this ends up being this domino effect that cascades into every aspect of my life when I make just one piss poor decision. But that decision is so easy to make because it's right there. It's a quick fix. It's like taking the I could be forty pounds overweight and I decide instead of going to the gym and eating well for months at a time, I'm going to go take a diet pill, get a, a a tummy tuck, and get gastric bypass surgery. Because I don't want to put in the hard work for long enough to get the result back. And when I think about the world that way, it just makes me stop. Because I realize all the times in life I took the fucking shortcut. And it pisses me off. Like, it's crazy how easy the shortcuts are now. In the digital age, the shortcuts are everywhere. They're literally every corner. So obviously, as I'm sharing this with you, I'm certainly not buying a Malaysian click farm. I'm not going to go down that path. I did some research on it before the podcast because I want to see does this really exist and how does it look. And there's websites like go to Google and type in Malaysian Click Farm, and you'll in the first three pages you can buy clicks and links to your website, your podcast, your Facebook page, Instagram. You, there's people in sweatshops essentially, for what it seems like on on Google, people in sweatshops that are paid money to click on things for you and I to feel better about ourselves. When you say that out loud, or at least when I do, it makes me feel like half the person I was before I said it. So as I'm bringing all this together and and realizing that this applies so much deeper than just to this podcast, just to this moment in life, it, it applies to every part of my life. It makes me pause and think, how many times are you doing it in your life? Like really take stock of how many times we look for the shortcut. Of course, we're predisposed with driving, like what's the quickest route here to there? But when it comes to every other aspect of your life, Where could you stop for a second, take a deep breath, and realize that you're not supposed to get from where you want to be, from where you are now to where you want to be, and longer than you're supposed to take to get there? Like there's a plan and a path you're supposed to go through so that you have the experience to appreciate and to be able to navigate the waters you get to. That doesn't come overnight. That doesn't come instantaneously. That comes with work and consistency. And that work and consistency and taking a step forward, one foot in front of the other every day, eventually leads to the fact that you have to get shit done every day. Hey guys, Ryan here. Thanks for joining me today. If you've enjoyed this podcast, please head over to iTunes, Spotify, or wherever you consume audio and subscribe to 15 Minutes to Freedom. 
If this brought you value, please do me a favor and drop me a five-star rating. Then share this podcast with someone who needs to hear it. For additional content, head over to ryannidell.com. That's R-Y-A-N-N-I-D-D-E-L.com.